Good evening, our scouts at home. Welcome to our first den meeting for our Tiger Scouts. How are we doing? Yeah, we're so excited. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is our first Tiger Wide den meeting for all of our scouts here in Lake Erie Council. And I'm here. My name is Jared Blundy. I'm the camp director out at Fireland Scout Reservation. And with me is Abby. Hi, everybody. I'm Abby Smith. I'm the food service manager at uh, Fireland Scout Reservation. Yes, so we hope that you'll come visit us this summer out at Firelands, where we're, we're going to do some awesome camping once uh, we get back outside. Uh, we have a fantastic program planned for all of our scouts at Adventure Camp and at uh, Weebles Exploration Camp. We're going to be superheroes this summer, so make sure you check that out and come join us at any of our camps doing uh, our Cub Scout programs. Fantastic. So excited. Oh, what, what are we doing today, Abby? Today we're doing magic. We are doing magic. So today we are going to do the uh, Tiger Adventure for Curiosity, Intrigue, and Magical Mysteries for our Tigers. So those that are following along at home, uh, what we'd like you to do is gather some materials just to start. So uh, if you'd like to make your invitation with us, you're going to need some papers, some markers, and some crafty things. Also grab a pencil for when we do some code writing. And then uh, if you want to do some tactile braille things with us, you can grab little beans or M&Ms or anything round to spell out your name in, in, in braille. Or you can just do it with a paper and pencil as well. And then finally, you're going to want a metal spoon for one of our activities later. Sound like a plan? Sounds like so much fun. I'm so excited. All right. Well, while, uh, while our folks are gathering up their materials and kind of listening along, I'd like to open it up with just a question to you, Abby, and our folks that are uh, following along at home, if you want to comment in the comment box. Uh, what Have you participated in anything that's been mysterious lately? As a matter of fact, Jared, the weirdest things keep happening to me, and I keep finding in my purse the most oddest of items. Really? I found, yes, I found toys, a marshmallow, uh, a bar of soap, just the craziest things, and I have no idea how they're getting there. Hmm. Not a clue. Well, I, you told me earlier that... Uh... The, the you were hanging out with some kids, right? I was hanging out with some kids. Sure you know, was. Was there anything that uh, maybe might point them in that direction? Probably the toys, <laughs> and maybe the marshmallow. So these I'm are, thinking that, that might be part of the possibilities. <laughs> that might be might be something to to consider. Maybe there's some kids that are sneaking and maybe in your purse. I do keep gummy bears in there, so they may be going for those. Let's see. <laughs> well, I also participate in some myster mysterious things lately. And you know, all about uh, the thing about magic and, and uh, illusion is that it's all about distraction, right? You can't have people looking where they think they have to look. You want to distract them to look somewhere else. So here's an example. I have to be mysterious and magical with my dog sometimes when I'm teaching him new tricks. So in my hand, I'll hold it closed like this and I'll have a treat in it when I want him to learn something. So he's focusing on my hand and he wants, he wants to get what's, whatever's in there for doing the treat. But sometimes I have to trick him and I don't have a treat for him. So he's always guessing whether there's gonna be one in my hand or not, but he always has to do the, 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 uh, the trick for me so that he has the opportunity to earn whatever's in my hand it's there. You're tricky, tricky. It's true, so you gotta distract him and create an illusion to help uh, help it all work. Science is pretty similar, you know? It's, science can almost seem like magic if you don't know how it works. But once you figure out the uh, the logic and, and how a different experiment works, then it's not so magical anymore and it makes a lot more sense. Absolutely. Just like when it rains and then you figure out how it rains and they're like, why, that's amazing. Yeah, people long ago probably thought that was magic or, or right? something like that. But now that we know it's all about condensation and clouds and precipitation, it's not so magical anymore. All right. So we are putting on a magic show later this afternoon, right, Abby? We sure are. Super excited. So we, 
we did our, our homework ahead of time and created an invitation for our magic show as an example for all of you Tiger Scouts. Do you want to show uh, the invitation to our magic show? Oh my goodness, I worked so hard on this. Ooh, look at that. It what does it say? Welcome, it says, welcome one and all, introducing the incredible Jody and everybody the amazing. Oh, I like your I like your verbs and your exclamations there. Thanks. Now I think there's just one thing missing there, Abby. Sure is. So we we need to make sure that if we're inviting people to our magic show, we need to let them know where and when it's going to be, right? That's right. Have to so tell we're that. gonna have we're gonna have our magic show here. What about five o'clock ish? Five o'clock. All right, well, five o'clock, and of course it's on Facebook Live. All right, we'll, we'll fix our sign, so it'll be better. All right, so you Tiger Scouts at home, if you're doing your magic show this afternoon, once you learn a few more tricks, or tonight, or maybe later this week, that's great. You're gonna put on a magic show for your family, or if you wanna do a live stream to your family and friends as well, maybe that's something that you can do with your parents. Uh, but make sure that you put on the, the day and when and where they're gonna watch it, because we wanna be in the right place at the right time, right? That's right. Cool. We can see all, all right. the magic. Do you, have our, do you have our invitation ready? I'm working on it. Almost <laughs> done. Almost. Good deal. All right. So this is this will be, we're going to put on a magic show for you guys with just a couple tricks. But uh, you'll be able to put on um, a show of your own that you can do as many tricks as you, as you like. And if you look in the description of this video and in the comments, you'll find some more uh, links for the resources that we're using throughout this video, but then at the very end is a, uh, a video where you can learn some more magic tricks on your own as well. So we're going to go over a couple of them, but there's many more that you can earn or learn and, and put on for your family. Look at hey, that. Five, today. Facebook Live. Is that 5 a.m.? That's too early for me. <laughs> 5 p.m. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So our, uh, our invitation looks good. I think that uh, we've gathered up our tigers for this meeting. Are you ready to get started with our, our pledge and the oath and the law? Absolutely. Sounds amazing. All right. Well, behind me here, I have our American flag. So we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Hand over your heart or your scout sign. We'll do this. Repeat after me. OK, Abby? OK. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. To the flag. To the flag. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And to the Republic. And to the Republic. For which it stands. For which it stands. One nation under God. One nation under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all. Very good. Now scout sign. And we'll go with the scout law, okay? A scout is trustworthy. A scout is trustworthy. Loyal. Loyal. Helpful. Helpful. Friendly. Friendly. Courteous. Courteous. Kind. Kind. Obedient. Obedient. Cheerful. Cheerful. Thrifty. Thrifty. Brave. Brave. Clean. Clean. And reverent. And reverent. And finally, the Scout Oath. On my honor. On my honor. I will do my best. I will do my best. To do my duty. To do my duty. To God and my country. To God and my country. And to obey the Scout Law. And to obey the Scout Law. To help other people at all times. To help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong. To keep myself physically strong. Mentally awake. Mentally awake. And morally straight. And morally straight. Two. Very good. Hopefully you guys are following along at home. We want to keep the scouting spirit alive and make sure that we are reminding ourselves of our, our duty. Now, the last thing I have a, a pop quiz question for you, Abby. What's the, what's the Cub Scout motto? I totally know that one. To do your best. Exactly. Good job. Now, if we're doing our best, we're going to do our best with all of these things. They may not go 100% right today, but we're going to do our best to put on a good show. And uh, when we do that for our families at home, we'll just do our best to put on a good show for them, too. Absolutely. 
All right, well, let's go into our first uh, activity here. And again, if uh, you're joining us, there are links in the description and in the comments for you to follow along. But let me show you our first resource. We're gonna start by learning our names in sign language, and then we'll go into Braille. But let's start with sign language as kind of a introduction to codes and things. So learning different ways to communicate and uh, ways that you can communicate in secret, right? Right, secret All right. I'm gonna show you all our American Sign Language. Now, what is American Sign Language and why is it cool, Abby? American Sign Language is the most universal type of sign language. And it's super cool because you can talk to people that normally you wouldn't be able to communicate to or people that you can communicate to secretly. So it's just you. Yeah, so you can talk with people that may not be able to speak verbally, but you could also maybe have like a secret conversation with your friend, right? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. That would be super cool. I would have all well, sorts of secret conversations. Well, for requirement two of our uh, adventure here today, it says to spell your name in sign language. So let's, let's, let's start with that. Seems like it'd be pretty good to start with to learn your name so you can tell people who you are, right? Absolutely. All right, well, you have a shorter name than I do, so maybe let's start with yours. Sure, my name is actually only three letters because one of them repeats. So okay, sure. you're gonna do it with me, Jared? Yes, so why don't you, awesome. why don't you teach along with me and then we'll, then we'll uh, bring our videos back in and we can practice without, without saying anything. Okay, fantastic. All right. All right, so the first letter, A. 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 Looks like just kind of a closed fist, right? With your thumb off to the side? With your thumb off to the side, that's right. Fantastic. And then B. Right. Oh, B. B's pretty easy too. Yeah, just four letters, number four. And then when you're when you're repeating letters, you just move your hand like this to say you're doing right. it twice. So I'm A, so B. B, B. Got it, okay. And then Y. Y, okay, this one's fun. It kind of looks like a Y. It does, love Ooh. it. Awesome. All right, so I've got my thumb and my, my pinky off to the side and my middle three fingers are just down in front of my palm, right? That's right. Almost and, like a fist without your thumb and your pinky. And you're doing it with your right hand because it's your name, right? Yes. All right. You so use your right hand when it's for you. So if, it's, if I'm doing it for you, maybe I should do it with my left hand. You do it with your left hand if you're okay. referring to someone else. Cool, cool. All right, so let's do that again. Let's put it all together. So we got A. A. B, 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 Y, and Y. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Um, so my name is a little bit longer. Uh, but you have the most well, let's try. Fun I what's that? You have the most fun letters. I love these. Oh, I do have fun letters. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my right hand now, <laughs> and uh, it looks like J. I fold my my thumb over my three fingers, and my pinky just draws a J in the air, right? Big scoop. All right, J, got it. J. And we already already learned A, which is again it. just that fist. Good. Uh, now R. What's R? R is just like crossing your fingers. Oh, okay. Little twisty guy. Cool. So you have two R's, so you get to do it twice. All right, so two R's, very good. And then O, just like O, got o. it. Looks like an O. Does look like an O. And mm -hmm. then a little trickier one, we're gonna do D. So D, you're gonna take your middle finger and take it to your thumb, put your pointer okay. finger up and have your pinky and your ring finger down. All right, Boom. cool. Okay, yeah, it does kind of look like a D, doesn't it? Sure does. So we wanna make sure that we're using our middle finger at our thumb, because if we use another finger, it means a different letter. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Super important. All right. Well, let, I'm going to pull this resource off the screen here, and it'll just be us two, and we'll practice without without it in front of us, okay? Okay. All right. So it's back to us. Let's, let's do your name first. Okay. Let's practice. Laura, with your name. All right. My name first. My name is A, M, B, 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 Y. y. All right. Nice. And uh, my You're name awesome. All right. is... J. J. A. A. R. R. O. And D. 
D. That's right. Cool. All right. Well, let's do it without saying anything this time. So it's a secret language just between the two of us here and everybody watching. <laughs> All right, that's cool. That now, Abby, cool. You, you have a couple of things to share with us as well, right? I do. I know a little bit of sign language. I think there's certain super, super important sign language signs that we should all know. And the first and foremost being please and thank you. Ooh, so, that makes sense. Got to be polite. Always polite. Don't forget your P's and Q's. So mm -hmm. P is, or uh, please, you just put your hand on your chest mm -hmm. and you just rub your chest like this. Okay, please. Got it. Please, super easy. And then thank mm -hmm. you is easy because you take the same hand that you just said please with and you bring it to your chin and say thank you. you just thank you. Bring it down. Yep. And you always, depending on who you're saying thank you to, you do it to the direction of the person you're saying thank you to. Well, for teaching us this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, two other really, really easy ones are yes and no. These are things that we should always okay. just know in life. So yes. It's like you're knocking on a door. Knock, knock, knock. You hold it forward. So that's okay. it. Yes. And then mm -hmm. no is a little mouse saying no. Two fingers on your thumb and no. No. And it's usually, you it's usually very... kind of do it a little aggressively. <laughs> no. It's kind of sharp, sharp. It is sharp. It's sharp. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think got... those are super yes. important. Yes. We've got and no. And yeah. uh, we've got please. Please. Yep. And thank you. Thank you. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. I love sign language. So, so Tiger is following all, along at home. You should be able to sign your name so you can sign it to your family members there with you, okay? If you want to take a, a little video or a picture and share it with us, we'd love to see it. You can put it into the comments below or share it with us with the hashtag scouting at home. All right. Well, let's move on to the next kind of code that we've got for us, which is another way that many people communicate, and it's with the Braille language, or the Braille, uh, I don't know if you call it language, but the Braille alphabet. Yeah, it's symbols. I mean, I would say they're symbols. So let's bring this back up for everybody to see. Again, this uh, resource is linked in the description in the comment field. And here is the Braille alphabet. So, so I thought that we could uh, we could try and uh, again to to write out our names using Braille, and you can do this in a couple different ways. You could use it uh, do it with anything tactile like these beans that uh, I have here at home, or you could do it with just a piece of paper where you're writing it out, and maybe if you punch it through, it'd be find something that you can actually feel with your fingers. And why is that important for us to be able to feel it with our fingers, Abby? It's important because this language is predominantly used for people that are blind. So they can only use their feelings. They can only touch. So it'd be really hard to read something on a piece of paper if there wasn't some sort of feeling to it, right? It would be so hard. But if these little dots are raised or you have them uh, aligned in a way that you can kind of feel it along left to right, then you'd be able to read something that's printed. All right. So your eyes getting tired, your fingers would get all tired. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, let me switch over to my uh, top camera here, and I can show you as I build my name using my little beans here. And you want to build yours while while I'm doing that? All right, so we got us back on screen. Let's switch over to the other camera. Here we go. All right. So what you got, Jared? I've got six letters, and the first one is J. So I'm going to use three beans for this, where those little red dots are on uh, that Braille alphabet. And they're kind of arranged, kind of a, almost kind of looks like a J. It next does. Next one it does. is an A. It's just that top left spot. Remember, there's three going in two different columns. So I have to make sure that they stay lined up. Otherwise, it'd be a different letter. Uh, the next one is R, which 
goes the first column, all three dots. And then just the middle one of the second column. That's the R? That's the R. That's cool. It kind of looks like an R too. Oh yeah, it kind of looks it like, really a, does. like a lowercase R. Like a lowercase I've never noticed that before. <laughs> so we're gonna do a second one of those R's. And then O is kind of cool. You go top left, middle right, bottom left. Oh. And then finally D is the top two, left and right, and the middle one on the right. So if you look here, I've got my six letters. We got J, A, R, R, O, and D. That's so cool. Were you able to do yours? I was. I did mine a little differently than Jared's. So instead of using beans, just so I could learn where the dots go, I did mine coloring on a piece of paper. Oh, so there's it. my name in Braille. So oh, okay, cool. B, B, Y. Oh, I see. The Bs are just two little dots. So it kind of looks like two little bumps of a B. Sure. Why? So if you uh, poked holes through the back of that, you'd be able to run your hand oh my down gosh. From left to right? Yes, I'm going to do it. Oh, cool. It's going to be the sweetest. And I, I saw you were careful. You had to, for your bees, those ones are lined up. Yes, they're the lined up two rows. super perfectly. Yep. Oh, Abby, we have a we have a question on, on our Facebook Live. Do you know okay. you're welcome in sign language? Um, I don't off the top of my head. I want to say it's off your forehead. You're welcome, but I can't remember. That seems right. I, we'll I have to look not, it up when we uh, move on to our next section, and we'll we'll make sure we answer that question. Yeah, well, well, I'll look that up and make sure I'm right. I know a couple more, but I don't know that one off the top of my head. I'm making braille. I'm going to show the braille screen one more time while Abby finishes up making it tactile. Which means you can touch it. I did it. It's amazing. All right. So I'm double checking your work. A, B, B, Y. Looks good. I'll switch back to you so we can see you, uh, see you run your hands on it. All right. So I poked. I don't know if you can see through it, but I poke little holes all through each one so I can mm -hmm. feel each spot. So there's my A, B, B, and then there's the Y. Oh, well, very cool. That's pretty cool, actually. I've never done that before. I haven't either. It makes me want to go feel all the buttons at places uh -huh. that have braille on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of fun. Once you get to know uh, more letters, you'd be actually be able to read them. Right? Rated whole sentences with my fingers. All right, again, our uh, our Tiger Scouts at home, you can do this uh, along with us. Just make a little, uh, you can write it down on a piece of paper and then make sure you poke the holes from behind your paper and you can feel the letters that you've made to write out your name. Super cool. All right, let's uh, switch back to my other video here. Jared's so handy. All his computers We're learning lots about this with our scouting at home wow, that's awesome. all right so our next activity here we've we've already learned about uh some existing uh ways that we communicate with other people but now we're going to create some of our own using secret codes i've always loved making secret codes in fact when i was in middle school my friends and i made one called the kfc which stood for the cool fun code <laughs> and <laughs> yep, yep. And we used to send messages back and forth to each other that uh, nobody could read except for us because we had the cipher. Do you know what a cipher is, Abby? Um, if I am correct, a cipher is kind of like something that tells you how to read code. So it tells you what symbols equal what, if whether yeah, it's alphabet or words. Exactly. It's kind of like the the uh, the solution to a problem. It's it's what you can use to break somebody else's code or to read one that you've made. 
That's cool. So let me show you some examples because you, you have, can do. You, you did can... you have your own cipher for your for your code for your friends? Oh, of course, of course. It took a while for me to learn it, but eventually I didn't need the cipher anymore because I was so good at it. So good. <laughs> All right, so let me share it with everybody here. And this is a, the next link in the description in the comments. Uh, this is a cipher for a, uh, a symbol-based code. So you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. And you can see that this, for the a, letter A, they just made a little box. And then a B was a box with an X in it. And then the rest of the letters are all kinds of little symbols that you might find on a computer or you could draw on a piece of paper. I could not draw V. <laughs> a little telephone, yes, that'd be a little bit difficult. <laughs> now, it would be impossible to figure this out without the cipher, right? Because if you didn't know uh, what these different smiley faces uh, meant and what letters they're for, you'd have no idea what the code said, right? Right. That'd be super hard. So you'd have to have a copy for yourself and a copy for your friend so that you can read and you can write your own code. But here's another example. This one is a little bit easier. Can you figure out what the logic behind this code is, Abby? Oh, they they moved every letter forward one. So Z yeah, became so A, B became, yeah, they, they just moved everybody over, slide over. <laughs> so this is one that you might be able to memorize and you wouldn't have to have the, the code in front of you every time because if somebody's looking over your shoulder to read your code, then it's broken. It doesn't work as a secret anymore, right? Broken. Ruined. So, so if you just remember that every letter is forward one and you know your alphabet pretty good, then you'd be able to write and read your code. So you were exactly right. Really they just hard. moved it forward by one letter. <laughs> it would still be really difficult just to do it like quickly. That would be hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now our next resource is just the same grid, except it's a blank one. So you can download this and you can write your own code in so that you can share it uh, with your family and you can uh, try and write in your own code and have them try and, and figure out the message. That's so cool. I'm doing that. I'm going to do it with my best friend, Erica. <laughs> that sounds great. This is, uh, this is requirement number three and requirement number four for you to create your own code and then write a message with it. And then you have to break somebody else's code that you didn't create. So I was thinking, Abby, what do you think about trying to break my code? I think yeah, I can do it. You think you can do it? I think so. Right. We'll see. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you a code that I wrote. This is not the cool fun code. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't share that with you. That's that's a real secret. That's <laughs> I'm not this, part of the cool fun is... kids. <laughs> This one is called the pig, uh, the pig pen cipher. So let me flip this around. We'll stop sharing here. Pig pen cipher. And what I would like you to try and figure out is what this says. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna write it down on my own piece of paper so I can try to figure it out. <laughs> Now I'll share this uh, after our live stream as a picture so that uh, you Tiger Scouts can try and crack this code that you didn't create as well. And uh, if you can comment on our Facebook video here, that will complete your requirement for breaking a code that you didn't make. I drew it on a foot. <laughs> you got it written down? I got it written down. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna crack the code. <laughs> Well, let me help you out. Remember how we said that you're never gonna be able to figure out a code without the cipher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna look at the cipher? Yes. I wanna crack right, well, be, before we do that, give me your best guess what you think it says. Oh my goodness. All I know is that the bottom word has two letters mm -hmm. that are the same. <laughs> you are right. There are two letters that are the same. And in fact, that same letter is somewhere else in the. Uh, uh, in oh, the code it is. Well. It's, in the, it's in there three times. Mm. All right. Well, let me share with you the cipher for this code. Here it is. This one's a little bit different. Oh my gosh. Okay. Isn't that cool? 
That is so cool. I love this. But don't reveal out. what it is because we want our Tiger Scouts to, to figure out as well. But you can no. tell me privately what you think the code says. Oh, God. <clears throat> Let's figure it out first. So Tiger Scouts, the way you read the it's not like the ABC one that we looked at before. This one is all about where in the grid the letters are. So you can see there are four different grids here. Well, two different grids, but one each, uh, one of them has dots and one of them doesn't. And what you have to look at is for whatever part of that tic-tac-toe board that looks like, uh, that looks like the picture for each one of those letters in the code, that's the letter it relates to. So I'll give you the first hint of my code, the first letter. Abby, you don't want to show them real quick? The first letter? Yeah, what the first letter is? It's a C. <laughs> it is a C. I got the so first look, word. That's all I've gotten so far. Sweet. So it looks like that top right corner of that first grid, which is where the C is. So that's how you know it's a C. Right. Very cool. This is super right, well, cool. I'm almost you done. Keep, I'm cracking the code. <laughs> you cracked that code, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Very good. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. They sure are, Jared. You're most welcome. All right. Let's uh, move on to our next requirement here, <clears throat> which is about conducting a science experiment and to share what we learned about it, which is requirement number five. Let me get back to our awesome faces here. Perfect. All right, so we talked earlier, Abby, about how science can seem like magic, right? Sure can. Well, let me show you a magic trick that I think is pretty cool. You don't know magic. I know magic, but okay. really I know science. Hmm. All right, so I bet you that I can make this metal spoon stick to my nose. You can't. I bet you I can. Even though it's slippery metal, I bet it can stick right onto my nose. Ready? Let's see it. Oh. <laughs> it didn't work. Do you know why it didn't work? Because your nose is too small. <laughs> no, because I didn't say the magic word. Oh my goodness. Alakazam. I don't think that was the right magic word. Oh, you're right. It might have been the wrong magic word. <laughs> well, what, what's the correct magic word? I'm pretty sure it's abracadabra, but I don't know. It's abracadabra. Okay. Abracadabra, oh. like my name. Abra. Abby. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Oh, no. <laughs> Remember how I said we were going to try our best earlier? You are trying your best. Oh, abracadabra. Oh, abracadabra. Ah, I got it. <laughs> there we go. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. <laughs> it's All magic. Right. So when we're doing science, we have to record our results. So we, we practice something, and then we write down what we saw. So for the first couple times, it didn't work, right? Oh. But for the last one, it did. And I'm going to tell you a little bit why it's supposed to work and maybe why it didn't work the first couple times. The way this uh, spoon on the nose trick or science experiment works is because when you saw me rubbing my finger on this, it's transferring some of the oils that are on my hands onto the spoon. And then you probably saw me kind of breathing onto this. That's to create some condensation on the, on the, uh, the bowl of the spoon here. And it kind of sticks to those oils that were there be left behind. And when I put the bowl of the spoon onto my nose, that combination of the condensation and the oils creates almost like a little sticky residue that will uh, be on it for a short amount of time. And that allows it to stick to your nose. So I made, I made a chart showing how many times it worked and how many times it did it. So we Ooh, tried I see it four times. Uh huh. And the first three times it did not work, so I put it in the no column. And okay. then on the fourth time it did work, so I put it in the yes column. And you can make a little note on the fourth time, the thing that I changed, 
is I kind of rubbed it on my nose for a second to try and get it to really stick to my pores. I am going to write that. I think that's important information. Exactly. So that is a science experiment that you can conduct with your friends and your family at your house there. Uh, the lighter the spoon that you have, the easier it tends to work. And you just have to experiment with more, uh, more oils from your fingers on, onto, the, onto the spoon, how much you huff onto the, uh, the bowl of the spoon, and how much you rub it on your nose to try and, trying to get it to kind of activate. So those are all different variables, different things that you can change to make your experiment work better or worse. You never know what's going to happen. You never know. That's awesome. All right. Science. Now let's move on to some real magic, huh? Uh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a magic trick for you special here, Abby. I'm so excited. I bet that I can make this straw float in midair. No, you can't. All right, here we go. I'm ready. What? It's even it takes, it takes yes. intense concentration to make it work. Intense. You can see I'm not holding it with my fingers. My fingers are all interlaced here. Hmm. There it goes. That's amazing. That's why you're the, what are you? They're incredible Giardini. <laughs> I am the incredible Giardini and that was my first trick. That was amazing. I loved now, it. Now I have something that I think is going to really blow your mind. And this is a special experiment using water and ice. Mm. Intriguing, right? It is, it is intriguing. Now, in I your magic shows, how ice works. you definitely cannot reveal the uh, the the science as we talked about behind your tricks, because that's part of the magician's code to not release that information. But since we're going to teach each other here, maybe I'll share a couple pointers with you at the end. Awesome. But are you ready for this trick? I'm going to turn this water right here, this water in my fire in your adventure fire camp cup. cup. <laughs> yep, this is just regular water right from my tap. <laughs> I'm going to pour it into my keep calm and dig a cat hole cup, which relates back to our leave no trace presentation we did last week. <clears throat> and I'm going to pour just regular water into my cup. And I bet you with intense concentration, I can turn that water into ice. Impossible. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's so impossible. Here we go. And I'm doing this live. So Abby, you can tell me if you think I'm cheating. I'm gonna pour water. You see the water go in there? I saw the water go in there. All right. I'm going to cover it up with my hand and focus all of my magical skill into this cup. And if I turn it over. What? An ice cube. Amazing, right? I can't even, no, I, that's amazing. If I turn my cup over, there's no water. I Just the ice that I created right here in front of your very eyes. That's incredible. I don't even know how you did that. I'm the incredible Jaredini. You are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Now it's very important when you are putting on your magic show to use those magic words that we talked about. So some of my favorites, we already talked about Alakazam and Abracadabra, yeah. but also like Hocus Pocus <laughs> and Presto when you reveal the big trick. Kazam. Kazam is another good one. <laughs> Very good. So make sure you use those intriguing and mysterious words when you're putting on your magic show for your family, okay? Super cool. Now, I know I told you I wouldn't reveal the code, but I like you a lot, uh, Abby, and I think that uh, if you want to put on a magic show for your friends and family, you should be able to do this trick as well. <clears throat> I definitely want to. So I'm going to teach you all this trick that I did here today with the magic and uh, with the uh, the water and the ice. And then, like I said before, we have additional tricks that you can learn on your own to fill out your magic show uh, with that YouTube link that's uh, linked in the description and in our comment thread. But are you ready to learn this trick? I'm so ready. All right. So I did have the ice. And I okay. did have the water. That was all real. And I did pour water into my cup. Yeah, I saw. But what else is in my cup? 
there? Is there like a towel in there? Yeah, it's this paper towel, towel that I taped uh, to the bottom of my cup. So it soaked up all the water. It soaked up all the water. And then I poured out the ice cube that was already in the cup that you didn't even know about. I didn't even know about it. That's amazing. And since the water was all soaked up by the paper towel, none of it spilled out. So you knew that I created that water into You're so ice. tricky. You're the mm -hmm. trickiest, Jared. That was good. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> As a bonus, do you want to learn how I did the uh, the magical floating straw? Yeah, I've been trying to do what I can't. <laughs> it's all about the magic of the tape. <laughs> so I stuck the tape to my finger here. And then I made it look like all of my fingers were interlaced. Let's see if it can still stick. Oh, no. But really, my middle my middle finger here was actually not interlaced, so I could still move it around out That's away from impressive. my fan, just like this. You're impressive. That's awesome. Pretty cool, right? Super cool. I bet you we could think of a bunch of different tricks, too. I bet so. You know, I duct tape so. is pretty magical on its own. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> all right. Well, that goes through all of our requirements. Let's just recap everything that we learned here today. And maybe while recapping, maybe you could uh, look up that you're welcome and we can share that as the last thing for oh, our Yeah, commenter. let's do that. I'd love to. So we started off uh, making an invitation for our magic show, which we did here today. And we made sure that we had the time and the place and the location, whether it's going to be online or there in your home, uh, on the invitation so people know where and when to go. <clears throat> we learned how to spell our names in sign language. And mine was J A R. R, O, and D for Jared. We had A, B, B, Y for Abby. Then we learned how to write our names in Braille, which is, again, where you can feel the letters with your hands. And you can do that with candy or anything round, or you can poke it through a piece of paper once you've written it down. You can feel it with your fingers. We moved on to creating secret codes, and I showed you a couple different examples of how you can just have a grid of the alphabet and then either draw little pictures or shift the letters uh, by one or maybe more than one to create your own code. And once you share that code of with a message that you've written in it with your family and they can try and break it, that's part of your requirements. And then I shared my code with you guys, which is this one right here. Again, I'll post a picture of this so you can crack it on your own in our comment fields below uh, using the pig pen cipher. And then finally, we did some science and magic together, learning how to stick a metal spoon to our nose. And then we learned some pretty cool magic tricks to, uh, to round out our lesson here. <clears throat> I see we have a, a comment in the, uh, on the video here. Where do you get the blank ABC cipher code chart? It is linked in the description and further up in the comments. There's a bunch of links for all these resources. Uh, so you'll be able to look up there and uh, click on them to find the blank code that you can print off and then write in your code on your own. <clears throat> and I'll repost that, that link again at the end here. Now, the last thing you'll need to do is to have your, your magic uh, show with your family. And you can do that tonight. You can do that later on in the, the week. Whenever you feel ready to perform your magic tricks, you can put on that show. And if you want to share it with us online, just remember to use that hashtag scouting at home so we can uh, follow along with you as you do your magic show. Do you, awesome. have a, do you have your welcome for us? I do. It's actually really interesting. So actually your welcome is the same as thank you. You just do it back to the person. Oh, so really? if someone says thank you to you, you say it back and it just means you're welcome. Okay. So if I say please, and please. then thank you. And then I would go, you're welcome. Oh, it's very cool. Well, that makes it easy to remember. It makes it so easy to remember. I'm so happy I learned that now. <laughs> well, I do want to say to you, Abby, for joining me today. This was a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully uh, your Tiger Scouts at home uh, really enjoyed this. If you're not following all along live, again, all those resources are still linked. So you can uh, perform these uh, tricks and learn along while you're at home uh, here with uh, doing our Scouting at Home initiative. There are many more resources on our website, which is lecbsa.org. And then right there on the homepage, there's a link to many more scouting at home activities that you can do while you're inside and practicing social distancing. 
So we thank you for joining along with us and uh, hope you all stay safe and uh, have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you later.